Welcome back. So in the last video, we talked about doing direct proofs, but in this video, we are going to talk about proof by contradiction, otherwise known as indirect proofs. And um, in order to do that, we need to take a slightly different series of steps than we did in the direct proofs. So I'll go through the steps right here. So first we're going to assume my hypothesis, just like direct proofs, but then we're going to assume the negation of the conclusion. So what is a negation? Negation is simply just the opposite. So um, if, if, um, if the conclusion says that x is going to be even, then we are going to assume that x is going to be odd. We are going to assume that it is the opposite. So then we have our um, the body of the proof, just like normal, and then we have the contradiction. We don't have the conclusion like we did in the direct proof. So we're going through this whole thing to prove the opposite of what the theorem is stating. And thus doing that, we are going to um, contradict, hence proof by contradiction, we're going to contradict the, um, the, uh, the first line of our proof and then by, the, by doing that, we will prove the original theorem. And I'm not going to, and oh yeah, don't forget the tombstone. And I'm not going to list the remark like I did in the last video. I'm just gonna shorten it up by saying an even integer is always 2K because it's divisible by two. And an odd integer is 2K plus one. Um, by adding the plus one, it makes it odd. So let's look at the example I okay, have here. Okay, so we're given the theorem that if x is an integer and x squared is even, then x is even. So from the previous um, slide or sheet of paper, we said first we have to assume the hypothesis and the negation of the conclusion. So uh, the hypothesis is always between the words if and then. So I went ahead and underlined that. And then we have to assume the negation of the conclusion. Recall that the negation is the opposite. So the conclusion is that x is even, but we're going to head and assume the opposite. So let me cover this up real quick. Um, so assume that x is an integer, x squared is even, good, and x is odd. So we're assuming that x is odd, not even, uh, like what it says in the theorem. So then there exists an integer k such that x equals 2k plus 1. We're good with that, right? Because we just stated that x is odd in the in the first line of the proof. And um, we, we know that two, 2 times a number plus 1 is always odd. So that's good. And now we have to plug this in the x squared. So we're trying to um, make sure that when x is odd, that x squared is even. So we're going to plug in x for x squared, thus x squared equals 2k plus 1 squared, quantity squared, and that equals 4k squared plus 4k plus 1. And that equals um, 2 times the quantity 2k squared plus 2k plus 1, right, because we factored out the 2. So if we take a closer look, this number right here is odd because two times any number plus one on the end, not in the parentheses, is always odd, okay? But look, since x squared equals an odd number, we have a contradiction because in the theorem, we wanted to state that x squared is even when x is odd, okay? So what, what we did is we kind of like manipulated the theorem, right? And we, we tried to prove it true for any case, or for at least uh, the case where x is odd. And we didn't get that. We got that x squared is odd, not even. So this does not work for odd numbers. It only works with even numbers. So consequently, x must be even. x must be even for x squared to also be even. It cannot be odd. We just proved that false right here. We contradicted the negation, right, or not, what am I saying? We contradicted um, the first statement right here, that x is odd. So we cannot have an even number, I mean, <laughs> an odd number. So let's, um, let's, let's take an example real quick uh, off the top of our heads. Okay, so if we have an odd number, nine, let's say we square, we get 81. That's odd, it's not even. So let's take an even number then. 8. 8 squared is 64. So 64 is even. Okay, so 
So the big picture that I'm getting at here is that when you're doing indirect proofs, you always have to um, prove the negation to be false, okay? You cannot have the negation be true. If it's true, if if you go through this whole process and the gate negation is true, then this theorem is invalid, okay? But this is this wasn't obviously the case. We proved this theorem to be true because we contradicted the negation. All right? So hopefully this helped and I'll see you next time with a video on mathematical induction.